Today I want to talk to you about waggler fishing. Now th through my early years of fishing I spent a lot of time on the River Trent fishing with waggler, catching roach, chub, some eyebreds, it was fantastic fishing and I learnt a lot about how to rig up for a, a waggler type session on the river. Preparation is everything, you have to prepare very well and often you're rigging up as many as three or four rods for different ways of fishing with a waggler and a lot of that work is done at home. Now waggler wise I always use Drennan Crystal Wagglers and there's a reason for this. With Drennan Crystal, Crystal Wagglers they're very easy to use and also there's a lot of variations to them. You can swap the tops on the wagglers, you can pull out the actual top from the waggler and replace the top with a shorter type top. You can also replace the weights at the bottom of the floats. You can take out the weight from the base of the float and add smaller weights. So they're very versatile. Versatile's what I'm looking for in a float. So once I can change these floats, they do everything I want on the venue that I'm fishing, the River Trent. Now often these floats are set up at home like you would using uh, pole type rigs. I mean all, all your pole rigs are put onto winders and that's exactly what I do at home. I set a lot of the, the floats up at home so I can just put them onto the rods once I'm on the bank. I mean if you carry a, a lot of different wagglers you're sort of covering every different way of fishing and, and the session that I'm, I'm going on tomorrow I'm hoping to catch roach in several different ways, maybe starting off fishing on the bottom and then hopefully in these warm conditions, I mean we've got a, a brilliant summer, a lot of the fish are feeding shallow on, on lots of, of venues and I'm hoping to catch some fish shallow at some point. So that reflects in the floats that are set up, I mean this is the float that I'll probably use for fishing shallow, just with a, a longer top so I can see all the shots settling on it and where, where I actually rig that up is quite interesting as well. Because all the floats are loaded what I do I put them on a 26 pound line, as a, it's not a shot leader it's to help the the float stops stay in place on the line because I don't want to put any shots at all around the float. So all I do to start with I just get a, a packet of, of float stops, Drenum float stops, and all I do I put one on the line to start with so I'm just putting one float stop straight onto the O20 suplex. Suplex is a great line for this because it's very supple so I just put one float stop and that's going to be the stop that stops the float from sliding up the line. Then I have a rubber swivel bead on the, the bottom of the float. Put the float on and then put two more at the base of the float. Now once you put two stops together it's very difficult for that float to actually shove those stops down the line they're quite tight on the line. So that's my float in place. I know that this float with the weight on it, it's got a three gram weight on it, sets the float almost to about there. So what I can do then, because I've got O20 line on, it's, it's very very strong and quite thick of course, but what I can do then, I can actually put the swivel for the hook length onto that. So that acts as round about a number 10 shot. And because it's a thick line I just attach it with an half blood knot, it's not the strongest knot in the world, an half blood knot, but of course because it's O20 line it's not, not going to break. So all I do then I just trim that off and that's, that's to put my hook length on, it's the, uh, the connection for the hook length that fits onto the bottom of the, the swivel link. Now then I can also put the shot, this, this rig I'm going to fish on the drop with and I just want to have a string of number 9 so they can actually be put onto the line and all I do I put them on with a, a set of pliers, the, these are actually what they use in dressmaking, the dressmaking pliers for, uh, 
for using for dressmaking basically. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put around about five or six number nines onto the line, which hopefully will set the floor something like right. I'll just put three on. Once you nip them on with pliers, you're not to, you're not damaging the line as such. You can nip them on quite carefully. I mean, often I use a magnifying glass so I can see that I'm actually shutting the shot up very well. Once you're underneath a microscope, you can just squeeze the shots on easily. And you can just shut them up. You're not over squeezing the shots or anything. So once I've got the six number nines on, I can then test it in a shotting tool. So once I go into the shotting tool, then hopefully the float will set about right. Now I could maybe get one more number nine on that, but with the hook length, the weight of the line, I would have thought that'll drop it down a little bit more. I can always adjust it on the bank. I've got about sort of two centimetres of showing above the surface. I could probably get one more number nine on there, and then that's the rig completed. Now you can actually put these rigs straight onto your rods and just put them in a, a sleeve but any any floats that you want to, to make up as spares, I mean I've already done my rods, what you can see in the background, this is just a spare rig. But you can see because I've put the shots on with pliers I can move them shots easily on this O20 line and I'm not damaging it. Suplex, it's a, it's a real nice line. The shots slide on it very easily without marking it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set up roughly the shot in that I'll probably want to fish shallow with this rig. So I can put the shots virtually in place on the line. And then in all the case it is then, I've got hooks already tied and these are tied at 18 B560s, Camasan B560s. And they're just tied to 104 double strength, which is a nice line to be able to swing roach into hand. It's strong enough to, to bully fish and it's strong enough to swing fish. Just a 104 double strength. They're all tied to 30 centimeter up lengths, which when you're fishing maggots, I think 30 centimeters is, is a nice length to fish with because you're fishing a very natural fall of the maggots on the hook. So I've got the hook in place, I've now got the rig completed. So what I can do, I can put this spare rig then onto a winder just to take with me. The length of line I leave above, I mean it all depends on the depth that you're fishing at. I mean where I'm going to fish today should be around about sort of nine foot, maybe ten foot at the deepest. So as long as my shot leader is at least ten or twelve foot long, so what I do, I can leave plenty of line above it. And then I can fasten onto the main line. The main line I'm going to use on the actual rod is only two pound or 2.6. Drenham float fish. Drenham float fish, it's a, 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 an O14 line in 2.6, which is about perfect for fishing on the river. You don't want too heavy a line, else you get a bow downstream if there's a wind on, and then it's difficult to actually get good presentation. So that's a spare rig what I've done for today. The rods that I'm going to use, when I say today, tomorrow, should I say, the, the rods that I'm going to use I've already made up. I've got three rods with different size floats on, ranging from a, a rod with a four gram crystal for fishing on the bottom with quite heavy shotting, up to a two and a half gram shallow float, where I'll use if I'm going to catch shallow. So this is just a spare, a spare three grammer, just in case we get quite a bit of wind on the water when we're fishing. 
So rigs like that I can just store in a box, take with me to the bank. The three rods I've already got made up, ready for the session tomorrow. So let's get to the bank and go waggler fishing. Waggler's a little bit of an art form. It's it's something that I spent a lot of my youth doing on this river, the River Trent. And to catch a, a weight of roach, you really have got to have quite a good rhythm to your fishing. Now when I talk about a rhythm, I'm talking about the amount you feed, when you feed, and also using the time that you're fishing to constantly keep a stream of bait and your hook bait in the swim. Now what I'm actually doing, I'm casting downstream. I'm fishing because you can see we've got quite a, a decent wind on, on the river today and it's a downstream wind which it's not really an ideal wind for fishing waggler. You want a slight backwind and this wind's slightly in his face. But what I'm doing, I'm, I'm fishing slightly downstream. Well, I'm fishing quite a long way downstream from straight out in front of me. I'm probably casting 50 meters downstream. And I'm doing this for a reason because I want everything behind the float to be a straight line from the waggler to the end of the rod. I don't want the line to be bowed. I want to try and keep the line dead straight to the float. And by casting downstream, I can achieve this. Now what most people tend to do is feed the maggots right in front of themselves. And this is a massive mistake because at the moment on the river, the river's very clear and the fish are wanting to be right where the bait's going in. So I'm firing the bait downstream, probably about 15 metres downstream, exactly almost where I'm entering the float into the river. I'm not fishing far from the bank, I'm only probably about, I don't know, maybe 16 metres out from the bank. But by casting downstream and sinking the line behind the float, you can see me just winding that float back. What I'm doing, I'm straightening everything up to the float so there's no bow downstream to actually shove the float through. And I'm feeding down gate behind the float, literally almost on top of it. And that's where the fish are. They're, they're right underneath the bait. I think, I think roach, they must ear the bait it in the water and they come right underneath it even in these clear conditions they sit right underneath the actual bait itself so you can imagine if you were fishing and feeding in front of yourself you wouldn't be able to uh, achieve good presentation and also you wouldn't be able to keep the float right on the top of the bait because as soon as the float entered the water the wind would take the line and, and you're not fishing correctly. Now I started the session fishing with a waggler fishing full depth. It's around about probably nine foot deep here, eight to nine foot. And what I've done is I've fed, the fish have started to come up off the bottom. And I've actually got, got three different waggler rigs. I've got one, one for fishing shallow, that's just got a, a strung out load of number nines below the float. I'll actually show you the rigs in a little while. And this is the one I'm actually using. I'm fishing up off the bottom, probably two or three foot off the bottom. And I'm catching the roach shallow with a strung out rig. But I've also got two other rigs. That One's very positive for fishing down to the bottom in case the fish were down. 
and the other rig sorted a medium type rig with not so much lead down the line. So what I'll do, I'll just have one more cast and then I'll talk you through the rigs, how I set them up and basically how I use them and when I use them. So all the time I'm keeping casting downstream, feeding behind the floor and trying to get that presentation right just for that couple of metres of run. It's a great way of building a weight. I've had some great weights of roach fishing like this on the river. You can sometimes, if you just slightly pass the bait, strike her to fish and also let the float run again if you're not too, fat, too close to the bank. And that's what I've just done there. And often you catch a bigger stamp of fish close in. That's not too big a fish, that's just a small, that's a chub actually. I've had two or three small chub. So I'll put this rig down, you can see how shallow it is, and I'll talk you through the rigs that I'm using for this session. Today I'm on the River Trent at Caythorpe. Now Caythorpe's a stretch of river below Burton Joyce and, and above Fiskerton. It's the stretch in between. It's absolutely full of fish and it's a great place to come and fish the waggler and that's the main thing that I wanted to do today is to demonstrate how to fish a waggler on the river. Now in today's session I actually started on the feeder and this is what I'd probably do in a match. I'd start on a feeder maybe fishing down the middle of the river and fishing for any bonus fish that's available at the start. But what this gives you, it gives you a chance to sit there with a catapult and once you've plumbed up and decided the line that you're going to fish with a waggler you can cast a feeder out and easily feed a line that you want to fish. So that's what I did today. I knew that with this downstream wind I'd need to feed downstream where I could present the waggler very, very well. So I started feeding at the start, just firing maggots, and maybe in the first hour while I was fishing the feed, and maybe fed around about half a pint of maggots, and probably the same amount of hemp, to establish an area or a trough in the river where there were maggots running through all the time where I could then start to fish the waggler over the top. Luckily on the feeder, or not luckily, I, I started quite well on the feeder. I had a bream probably close to four pound, a couple of skimmers and some roach as well. So it was a nice start to the session. I've put a few pound in the net before I actually picked the waggler rod up. Once I started fishing a waggler, I picked up, the first rig I picked up was one that was almost full depth. This swim here is round about probably nine foot deep. And I've picked up the heavier waggler rig, fishing down to the bottom. So I'll just talk you through that rig to start with. But firstly, we'll have a, a quick look at the actual rod and reel that I'm using. I'm using Acolyte Ultra 13 foot rods. Now, 13 foot rods for fishing a waggler is a lovely, lovely balanced piece of kit that's got the right action. It's, it's, it's a tip action that bends slightly through the second section. So you've got a lovely action to the rod. You can strike quite hard, even using uh, quite light up length, as light as probably or eight at times. But today I've just fished a 0.1 up length. And, and the, 
the rod itself bends nicely into the fish. You're not going to get broke. You can swing fish in quite easily up to three or four ounce. So that's the rod that I'm using, just a standard Acolyte Ultra 13 foot Drennan float rod. A beautiful piece of kit. Right, the reel, I tend to use quite big reels. I've got quite big hands and I don't like fiddly small reels. So I still use a 4,000 type reel. The main line, again, is very, very important. You want the lightest main line that you can get away with with a waggler. And often I'll use either a two pound Drenham float fish reel line, or if conditions allow where you can fish a slightly bigger waggler, a 2.6 main line. A 2.6 pound main line is round about 014 diameter. And this is, it, you've got to keep that main line small because if you fish with too heavy a main line, what happens is you get a bow in the line, especially with a down gate wind like you've got today. And once you create that bow, it sends you float through quicker and things aren't right. So the real line needs to be very light. The float fish line, although it floats, you can sink it below the surface, but you don't want the line to sink too deep. So the float fish works perfectly well. The Drenham float fish in 2.6 or two pound. Right, the rig itself, I don't actually put onto the main line. I actually set the rigs up in my tackle room back at home. And I put them on much heavier line. If I can just start, if I can just shove this rod up on without breaking it onto the stand. Right, let's have a look at the actual line. What I've got is an a, a 026 pound main line that I attach with a loop. I, I have a loop in the 2.6 main line and I attach the O20 to it. Now, if you could see that loop right at top, maybe you can't, but there's, it's looped on just a, a strong loop. And what I do, I tie a, an half blood knot in the O20 onto it. So I've got a very, very strong knot there. Right, the O20, the reason for using this is because I use either side float stops, either side of the float. Right, I have two below the float and one above. Right, now these stops keep the float in place, but of course I can slide the stops on the line to change the depth, no problem at all. The two below acts as a buffer so that the float never moves on the line. The float itself is a fully loaded, four, this, this rig is a fully loaded four gram Drennan crystal that's onto a rubber swivel link, a Drennan rubber swivel link. Right, so it's a four gram crystal with just a normal insert to the actual crystal float. Now this is my positive rig. If I can just get hold of the, the rod again. This is a positive rig, and what I've got, I've got a block here of number eights. I think there's eight number eights. There's nine number eights in a block, right? And this is because this rig, I want it to get down to where the maggots are hitting the bottom very quickly. I've then got two number eights, two number eights, one number eight, and then a Drennan swivel link to actually put the hook length onto. Now these, you can detach the hook length very quickly and put a new hook length on if you need to do with these, these type of links. The hook length itself is Drennan double strength in 104. So it's a 104, a 0.1 uh, hook length, and that's a 30 centimetre hook length. Now these are tie on to, to, to sticks that goes in, in the box itself. So they're, they're all set at, 30 centimeters each hook length. The hook itself is a, an 18 B590. Now these are a, a, a strong hook, but quite fine. A B590 is perfect for double maggot. If there's a lot of fish, I'd use a 16 B590. If it's slightly more difficult than 18, and so on and so forth. If it's a difficult day and I want to fish just single maggot, I'll fish a single maggot on either a 20 or a 22 in the same hook. So that's the first rig that I've got set up. So I'll just put that to one side and we'll have a, a quick look at the next rig. 
The second rig I've got is not quite as aggressive as the first one. Right, this is what I call just a, my medium rig. Same, same rod, same reel, same main line. Again, I've got the same 2.6 reel line onto a, it's not a shock leader as such, it's, it's a leader to, to hold the float stops in place around the float. Now what you can see with this one, I've got a three gram waggler, but what I've done, I've put a slightly longer insert to it. The, the insert on the other crystal was a short normal insert. This one's got a slightly longer insert because this rig is slightly lighter in itself down below. So just to have a look at the, the setup I've got on this one, I've just got, again, a block of number eights. I've just got five number eights blocked together, then one number eight, and then the swivel again below to attach the hook length. Again, the same hook, a size 18, which is perfect for double maggot for fishing close to the bottom. This rig's, again, for getting down to where the fish are near the bottom, but not quite as aggressive as the other one. The third rig that I've got is one that I've set up for fishing shallow. Often when the water's clear, like on the River Trent is today, the fish come right up off the bottom. So it's important to have another rig to fish up off the bottom. And of course, this has got a much smaller float as well. So I'll just put that to one side. I've got exactly the same setup with the, the same rod, the same suplex or 20 suplex leader for the float to go on, but the float is much smaller. The float where I've got on this is just a 2.5 gram, set up in the same way with the, the same float stops either side. And what I've done, I've added a longer top to the float so that the, the top of the float is much thinner. And this is for fishing up shallow. When, once I come off at bottom, I want a lighter float. I could fish it slightly lighter even than this, but with this downstream wind today, it would have been quite difficult and would have shoved it through with the wind. So I'm fishing a two and a half gram shallow rig. And this is set about two foot six, maybe two foot to two foot six off bottom. And I think I could have actually caught even shallower today on this rig. The fish were right up in the water at times when I was feeding. And all I've got on this is number nines. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six number nines, and then again a swivel. I think the swivel is round about a number 10 in weight. They're quite light. So what I've got, I've just got a strung out rig for fishing on the drop for right in the maggots. And this was the best rig. Once I started to catch today, this rig was fantastic because you were right in, right on top of the maggots and I could catch very, very quickly. So a great rig once the fish come off the bottom. I think what, what you've got to bear in mind also is the river today is probably absolutely perfect for catching plenty of fish and the fish do want to come up in among the maggots. If there were extra water on the river, you may have to feed more aggressive and fish right on the bottom. So the rigs that I'd set up, probably with a little bit of color and, and extra water on, I'd all be fishing down to the bottom. I wouldn't bother with the shallow rig. I'd probably set up a slightly heavier rig to combat the flow and everything that you've got with extra water. But the three rigs I've set up today are perfect for fishing in these conditions. I've brought two main baits with me today. I've brought hemp seed and I've also brought maggots, bronze maggots with just a few fluoros mixed in them. I mean, I've fed, I've been fishing probably two, two and a half hours now and I've probably fed two pints of maggots just to give you some idea of the quantity of maggots I'm getting through. I started feeding hemp at the start, but very quickly I started getting indications shallow. And I realized that today, for some unknown reason, even though it's bright sunshine, the fish wanted to be up. So after maybe an hour, I've actually cut the hemp out altogether and I'm just feeding just the maggots. If I were wanting to catch the fish nearer the bottom and on the bottom, I'd have probably carried on feeding the hemp. But because they're responding really well to the maggots and wanting to come right up in the water, e even though, same as I say, it's a sunny day, 
you wouldn't think that the fish would want to come right up in the water but today they have for, for some unknown reason they're, they're right in among the bait so I cut the hemp seed out I've not not fed it because it's a heavier bait hemp seed I think is better when you're wanting to try and keep the fish down and you can see it's literally a bite every cast it's fantastic fishing I mean at, at this rate I think if you kept catching fish you'd easily catch 24 25 pound of roach which is an you know an immense day's fishing fantastic We've actually got the, the national championships on this river in two or three weeks' time. And the fishing, you know, if it stays like this, the, the conditions and the fishing is very, very good at the moment. When you're catching quickly, catching roach, I, I try to swing most fish. And this is because you want to try and get into a rhythm and if the fish are sort of three to four ounce you can swing them quite easily. But what I tend to see a lot of the time with anglers is that they seem to take the time winding the fish in and the fish is full of life and when they try to swing them because they bounce around a lot they lose quite a few fish. If you're going to swing a fish you've got to be positive with it and try to to crank the fish in quite quickly and then literally swing it straight away. Because if you don't, what happens is start thrashing around and that's when you lose fish. So if you're gonna swing fish, you've got to be quite aggressive with it. Even though I'm only fishing quite short, and you know, I've said round about 16, maybe 18 metres at the very most, I'm still using quite a strong catapult. I'm using a, a medium elastic on a Drennan catapult because I, I don't like the smaller catapults, the deli type cats. I'd rather use a more positive pouch. If the wind gets up, it's easier to fire the bait the pouch is quite big if I want to put a lot of maggots the size of the pouch is a good size so the catapult for me is is, is probably very important I mean it, when I used to fish the river originally we used to use bait aprons all the time and quite big catapults but of course now a lot of the time we have stands I mean I've got a, a platform in today I've actually sat out in the the river with a platform where years ago we used to stand up nearly all the time fishing but once you get nice and comfortable your bait's right to hand on a bait waiter I've got a Drennan bait waiter you can't knock over your bait your bait's right to hand all the time the catapult also I can pick up very easily to feed the maggots so it's all just making life a lot easier for yourself having a, the right setup to fish the waggler and I'm sat here nice and comfortable I can concentrate on my fishing hook baits when you're fishing with maggots can vary I tend to try to fish double maggot when there's there's roach about double maggots a great hook bait because it's slightly more selective for catching a, a little bit bigger stamp of fish there's also a few day some bleak around today and they're put off with the double maggot so double maggot, I'm fishing a, an 18B560 hook, which is a, a terrific hook for catching a lot of fish when you're wanting to swing them. And the hook bait is just, just double maggot. And I hook them, I don't hook them top and tail as they call it, I always hook them from behind, for the, from the blunt end. So both maggots is hooked through the blunt end of the maggot. If you do get problems 
with the maggots doubling over. Sometimes when the fish are feeding not quite as well, you get odd times that a double maggot can double over the hook and that can become quite frustrating and that's when top and tail in a maggot, putting a maggot through the nose or through the blunt side can make a difference. But today I've not had any trouble. I think the fish are feeding very well and they're taking the bait nicely even though it's hooked two through the blunt end. Of course when it's more difficult, I mean I fished on the river yesterday and yesterday a size 18 up, I caught on for a while but after a while I had to drop down and in size of hook and just finished up fishing single maggot on a 22 B560. A Camasan B560 hook in a size 20 is quite a small hook and that that was the best hook yesterday when the, the fishing was more difficult and just fishing a single fluoro maggot was the best hook bait. But this today really has been one of those days. It's a red letter day when there's loads of fish present and that's when the fish want to come up in the water. When the fish are competing, they'll come shallow, even in this clear, clear water, what we've got today. And it really has been terrific fishing. I think the last hour I've had a, a bite virtually every single run down. All right, because you're fishing up, you bump an odd fish, you lose an odd fish and you miss bites. But it really has been terrific fishing.